Hello peeps, here I am again trying the lives out. Uh, I realized the other day when I did two, li two lives last week that I do the same thing on digital as I do in person. I just go up to somebody, phone somebody, whatever the scenario is, and just start talking. I rarely introduce myself, really have to get better at that. So this time I'm actually going to say, hello everybody, this is Tracy. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but you may also know me from my company name of Paper Pusher, where you may have seen me at markets or craft sales or seen my classes advertised. So here we are again for, woohoo, look at me go, two in a row, our second Make It Monday. Today I'm going to show you uh, how to take one of the pictures that you save on your phone and turn it into a card. Now, one of the th things that's very big in the crafting world is something called casing. And K stands for copy and share everything. So when somebody posts something on the media, on their device, whichever way they do it, um, it is considered, you know, flat, what is it? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Um, casing their card is sort of like a, hey, uh, the, your card is gorgeous. I like it so much I want to make it myself. So it is a thing. Um, and the, the proper way to do it is when you do it, you give credit to the person who had the original card. Um, so... Even though when you see my card, you'll see that it does not look exactly like this, because that's the point of, here's how you make it your own. Um, it is based on this card. And this card stopped my scroll. Look at me with all the savvy tech talk. It stopped my scroll. So I was flipping through, looking at signs. And this is, I'm reading it upside down now, because I still haven't totally figured out my camera. Karen Hadler. And I saw this card, and I just thought, oh my gosh, look at that card. And again... These are not my colors. I don't do pastels. I do love this suite of products, though. But it was, I stopped it, and I was like, oh, this is, I have to make one of these. Now, I knew at the time that I was not going to make the card to look exactly like this. I didn't want it quite this pink, and I wanted to make it for a class. So the idea of roughing up the edges is actually not that hard, but it does take a little bit of practice, and not everybody likes roughed up edges. So I will show them the inspiration card when we make it. And I will show them the card I made. And then they will have options of roughing up the edges or not. The card I made, I did not. You will also notice, while this card is predominantly sort of a blue and pink, mine is more a green and white. <laughs> but that's how casing works. So beautiful card, Karen Adler. Thank you very much. And the card that I made with it, what it inspired me to make, was this one. Oops, which again... I'm going to figure out how to make this camera go the right way so we can stop doing that. Hey, while I'm at it, maybe I'll even figure out the autofocus. Because it does not seem to be working. There we go. So this is the card I made. So, interestingly enough, I'm going to see if I can get it to focus. Yes, look at that. This is the same piece of paper that she used. This pattern paper behind is the same piece of paper. Those of you familiar with Stampin' Up! know that... Our designer series paper is two-sided, right? So this is the one side she used, and I do believe she used her blending brushes and a little bit of blue ink and, and added some extra color around the edges, not to give it the more vintage look. But when you flip it over, there's trees. Now, this was my favorite paper out of the pack. And I will show you that there is lots of cool paper in this pack. There's one that is blue. And if I'd been ready, this would have been much easier. There's blues, there's some darker greens, there's lots more with pink. Look how cute these things are. There's the paper pack that I picked. There's holly. And then, as with all good paper, there's two sides. Flip it over. I absolutely love this one with the big stripes on it. Um, so lots of papers to choose from. It turns out that my favorite paper is the one she used. I just used the other side of it. Now, with her card, because she used the dark green side, let me get my sample out here, she used this side which you can't really tell, but it is a, it, or a, not dark green, a light green. But then when she put her white label on it, uh, it worked. I tried it with a white label, didn't like it. it there, I didn't have enough contrast. So I cut a circle out of the same label, turned it over, so that I could have more of a green. I'm going to show you a trick on that for how not, how not to waste paper like I did. Um, I also just, instead of making the big bow, I didn't want to put the bow up here at the top because that covered too much paper. I like the paper too much to cover it up. But I did actually like the, the idea of like a little pop of pink in here. Um, there's some 
you know, a long ago crafting rule that you should have three colors on a card. So I do. I have dark green, light green, and, and pink. Which for those crafting along and looking at the Stampin' Up! lingo, I could properly say I have powder pink, evening evergreen, and the other one that I've... Mint macaron. <laughs> See, that was a good pause while I tried to remember what the third color, which the third color was I used. Um, I got a little bit of the basic white twine. I love this sentiment from there. It says, may the love of the season warm your home and fill your heart. And how nice is that? So this is the card I made based on her design. So I will give credit to her. I'm going to open my phone again because it's closed on me. Karen Hadler. So this is the thing with casing. You can case something exact. If you remember last week, we made the card from the catalog. And, and if you looked at that card and looked at the picture, you'd say, yeah, that's the same card. And even though I ch tweaked a few little things in the one last week, it's the same card. This one, you may not instantly think, oh, it's the same card. But this is what made me make this card. So, the fine art of casing. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick, though. So, you see on here, this is what I did. I made the card. I made a circle out of white. I decided I didn't like it. I pulled it off. So I took another piece of paper, oops, here, we'll do this so you can actually see what I'm doing, took another piece of the DSP and cut the circle out of it. So I got the one that I wanted. Now this is not the most efficient use of DSP. So I'm going to show you, and I do this on lots of things. Um, if you're using the very expensive specialty paper, gold paper, things like that, and you're going to layer your cards. I left my base on the floor, one moment while I, ooh, I'm so impressed. I, I learned I have a very squeaky chair but it did not squeak this time, so that's nice. So when you're going to layer your, your card bases together, like this so you can actually see the layers, and you go like this, this is what's going to be covered up. So you know that if this was like gold paper, or even if you just don't want to, you know, you want to get the absolute most out of your paper, you know how much your, your border is. So if you were to cut some leaves out of the middle here, no one would be the wiser. And this is definitely what you want to do, like I said, with gold paper or the very, um, not, I was going to say the very rare, but it's not rare. You just, in some of the specialty papers, you only get two sheets of the paper. So you don't want to be leaving huge tracks of it unseen necessarily. So cut some things out of the middle of it. In this case, what we're going to do is instead of having to use up my DSP, because I want to keep enough of it that I can make as many cards as possible with the cute pattern, <laughs> like, we're, I'm going to show you what we do here. And what would have been a better idea on this one. And I'm also just going to use a different shaped die so you get an idea what it looks like with that. I'm not going to totally do the card, but I have enough little pieces on my desk that I, I might be able to pull this off. So this is what, we, what we're going to do. When you're setting up your card and you decide that you want the, the trees are going to go about here. Right? You've got some your trees cut out. Yeah, if I put that about there. I did not make a sentiment, so let's just pretend that this piece of scrap. This was also the piece I tried on the other one, but... That I was going to use as just one of the flags, but then once I decided to make the circle this color, I didn't. So let's just pretend this is a sentiment. So we want our sentiment here. I'm going to put a piece of ribbon, and I'm going to put my other ones here. And yes, I guess it's up to you if you want to put your card exactly like that. But you get the idea. So I know that roughly around here is where I want to put everything, so I need my, my cutout piece to be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use man's greatest invention, the sticky note. Okay, one of man's greatest invention. There are a lot more important ones out there. And this is where I want to put my white circle, or my white square. So I'm going to put that out of the way. And look at me. I'm risking it all, people. I'm bringing in the machines. I'm going for, I'm going for gusto, showing you how to make stuff in person, and let's see how it all works. So this is the mini stamp cut machine, which is just adorable. And you don't get it because of the way the uh, the way the camera is so close. You can't get the full effect of it. But it is adorable. It is just the perfect size. I'm going to uh, rip my sticky off because I made it so it won't fit through the machine. Um, and, and as you'll notice, <laughs> the amount of space that you can see on my desk in my camera is quite accurate to the amount of space I have clear on my desk at any given point when I start to craft. Because I start to get stuff everywhere and there is very little space. So the beauty of this little machine is that it doesn't actually have a very large footprint for how much room you need on the desk. So when you just need to cut one little thing, it is the perfect little machine to pop over onto your desk and cut out a tiny little label or something. 
And there would be that squeaky chair. So I love my mini cutter. There is a, it is a little finicky. There's a couple little tips that you need to use to make it work for you a little bit better. But once you master that, whew, that thing's awesome. So, you know, this is how you know that this is like real crafting and that we're not making anything up because I should have told you to put your paper the right way and by total fluke because we are upside down because I, I actually was thinking I was doing it backwards but because everything's upside down it turned out right. Um, make sure when you do that that if you wanted this square to be on this side make sure when you're cutting the, the thing out like whatever shape square circle that when you put it through you're doing it the right way because I'm doing everything upside down there I had a moment of panic thinking oh my god I put it on the wrong side of the card turns out I didn't so here's what we're gonna do this is where we want to go now so now I'm gonna use this square for my trees and you'll notice there's a little cutout shape here but when I pop this up it's just gonna give you a hint of the green below and if you really didn't want that you could use a slightly bigger like um, a slightly bigger die cut and make like a little layer of cardstock that that borders this but I like the idea of having a little a little bit of see-through there and I'm gonna pop this up on dimensionals so you are gonna see a little bit of it and the reason we're popping it up on dimensionals is because when I put all that ribbon and everything there and I put the other it's not gonna fit flat anyways so we might as well just do it on dimensionals to begin with so this is gonna pop up a little bit like this so you're gonna see just a bit of the bottom and then we're gonna put all our other stuff underneath here and we're going to do it in an organized fashion. I said I'm not going to make you sit through me taping it all down. You get the gist of it. And we're going to put our little decorations on. These trees. And when I first saw them, I thought of the Grinch movie. And they're just adorable. And then let's pretend this is our sentiment that we just put over that is not the exact same color as the label. So now you'll see we've done this. We get just a little bit of the shadow of the green from behind, which is cool. And we haven't had to use an extra piece of DSP. So that is the trick. Uh, there is a technique you can make called spotlighting, where you purposely take a piece of DSP or cardstock or whatever, cut it out, cut another layer, and do that and just have color there. And that's what gave me the idea is, well, you could do that everywhere. Anywhere you don't want to have to, because like I said, this is, this is the piece of DSP I used to get my circle this way. I didn't waste any DSP. I cut it out of the middle. No one's the wiser. And I still could have cut shapes out of the green if I wanted to. Just make sure that you know like what's going to be seen and what's not going to be seen. And don't get too close to the edges because that will usually spell disaster. So there you go. That gives you an idea what this card would look like if you made it with that shape as well. So again, there's my card that I made. And darn it if my phone doesn't keep locking me out. There's the inspiration card. And once again, Karen Hadler, thank you very much for your idea. It's a beautiful card. I'm going to see if I can bring that up closer to get a better look. So again, that was her original card. Lots of blue and pink using the Whimsy and Wonder Suite. And there's my card that I cased off of her. So, case a card, make it your own. Thanks everybody for joining me. I am loving this Wednesday or this Monday. It is wet and cool and it is the perfect weather for somebody like me, but it is also perfect weather for all of those people trying to fight fires, grow crops, and do all the other things that hot, dry summers don't help them with. So I'm enjoying my day today, making cards and talking to you guys. Thanks very much. I hope you all have a fantastic beginning to your week and we will see you back here Wednesday at 6 o'clock for What's Up Wednesday. Thanks, everyone.